nice one cool dudes. I am here at Petswood. It's just outside of London, possibly one of the closest walks you can do. And I'm going to undertake a 7.3 mile circular walk. Good luck everyone, especially me. I'll give you some good history of Petswood cool dudes. Over there's a Daylight Inn and it's called that because of William Willett who created Daylight Savings Time. I'll tell you more about that later on. These days it's a, a thriving suburb, but back in 1872, there was just one house here and it was a rural area and it was developed by a man called Basil Scrooby who paid £6,000 for the developers to put a station here. Hmm, very clever, Basil. Some very nice houses around here. Hello? One of my favourite facts about Petswood is that it was home to the very last Woolworths. Yes, perhaps the greatest shop ever built. And according to Wikipedia, the manager emptied the last bits of the pick and mix on the last day and put them in the bag and auctioned them. How much do you think they went for? Have a guess. Do you think it was A, £114, B, £5,014, or C, £14,500? Thought of an answer? What did you go for? It was C, 14,000. 500 pounds. Must have been some good ones in there. And that brings me to today's question. If you could have any three sweets, but only those for the rest of your life, what would you have? I would have strawberry laces, of course, flying saucers, and for the third one, difficult, maybe the milk bottle ones. Please put your answers below. Nice one. This, my friends, is a sundial and a memorial to William Willett. Who the hell was William Willett? I'll tell you about him. Well, he was riding through Pets Wood one day on his horse early in the morning and he noticed how many blinds were closed. And he thought, what a waste of daylight. So he wrote a pamphlet using his own money called The Waste of Daylight, which he published in 1907. And he proposed that clocks should be advanced 80 minutes in four incremental steps at 20 minutes every Sunday night during April. Eventually the idea became common practice in 1916, sadly a year after poor William Willett died. So he never got to see an hour earlier, unless he got up earlier. I think this must have been carved from this fallen tree. I've just Googled this fellow here and he's part of the Chislehurst Bear Trail. What an excellent idea. There are 25 different bears en route. I feel like I should have done that walk instead of this one now. Uh. Well, cool dudes, these ruins are what's left of Scabbury Manor, which was the home of the famous British family, the Walsinghams. You may have heard of Thomas Walsingham who was in charge of the Tower of London when Anne Boleyn was in prison there, and Thomas Cromwell. And also, this is where Francis Walsingham was born, who was known as the Spymaster. A pretty good name, right? How do I become a Spymaster? Well, Sir Francis was one of the people, through his network of spies, who managed to get evidence on Mary, Queen of Scots' attempt to overthrow Elizabeth I as while she was imprisoned, she would send letters out in caskets, which um, she thought were getting through to uh, her sympathisers, but they were being intercepted and read by Francis Wal Walsingham's spy network. Hmm. And so eventually, Mary Queen of Scots was executed, among many who fell victim to the spy master. From a distance, this sculpture looks absolutely terrible. The poor young bear has been attacked by the big bear wielding something very suspicious. Oh, it's a fish, a fish sandwich. 
OK. Back into Petswood after a satisfying burger. And I've been thinking about becoming a spy master. And I've realized that I'll never get approached to become a spy. And this is based on one experience when I was filming a kids TV program and none of the extras turned up. So all the cast had to be in the background for a party scene. And they started filming, and after a couple of shots, the director stopped and he said, um, all right, everyone else can stay, but Marek, you can't be in the background because you look too strange and it's too noticeable. So on those grounds, I realised that I look too weird to ever be a spy. Pretty depressing, right? This is Flusher's Pond to the right. And as you might have guessed, it does smell a little bit like something has been flushed. I just Googled this Hawkwood estate to see if there's any good facts about it. And the only thing that came up was that a Colonel Edelman sat in his garden shooting pigeons on sight. Finally, a man after my own heart, someone who doesn't like pigeons. I bet you'd be annoyed now because the whole place seems to be infested with those parakeets that have spread everywhere. People might think I'm being mean about the parakeets, but I think they're quite invasive and they force out the, uh, what's the word? Local birds. That's not the word, but you know what I mean. silent this train. The driver waved at me, did you see that? I can see why this becomes addictive. That was one of the greatest moments of my life. Look cool dudes. A fox on the line. Death wish fox. Go on. The train's coming. He's literally walking on the train track. Maybe it's a dare. The end bit of this walk is a lot of train bridges. It's good news for train lovers. Bad news if you don't like steps. Oh no, this is the worst. As if all your dreams have been stolen when you are so close. Only six foot five people can enjoy this. I'll give you a chance to see what a tall person would see. What was it like up there? Almost at the end of the water now, cool dudes. If you enjoy that, you can make your life even better by joining the Cool Dudes Walking Club. How do I do that? Just go to YouTube and click on the join link where you can choose whatever tea you like from 99p a month or more if you'd like to be super generous. And for that, you get to use these incredible emojis. Oh, yes, please. And see these members only videos. Who could ask for more? No one. But there is more. He also gets into the prize draw at the end of every video. Oh, yes, please. Oh, look, um, we're here. Nice one, cool dudes. The walk is complete. It was 8.62 miles, just over five hours. A very pleasant walk to do if you're close to London and fancy getting to a little bit of countryside. All right, Pride Dwarf members coming up next. Oh yeah, um, one more thing. Stay cool. Nice one, cool dudes. I hope you enjoyed that video. I very much enjoyed my 
trip to that sort of Kent area, except for the fact that I got fined £145 by Southwest Trains and treated like a murderer for having a ticket that I accidentally booked on the wrong day. Thanks, Southwest Trains, for making me feel as though I may have killed someone rather than just made a small mistake. Anyway, um, let's get on with it. Oh yes, what a nice painting that was. Oh, look, I've taken William Willett's memorial and I've made daylight shine upon it somewhat successfully. This, of course, is on eBay called Deeds for £11.40 starting price. Maybe Chris Martin will find out about this and bid up to a million pounds. Fingers crossed. OK, cool dudes, it's time for the prize draw. Thank you so much to everyone who's joined the club. It is invaluable to me, um, and you can win this week a bespoke sketchbook. Ooh, a card from Stripey Art, the stickers, the badges, the greatest scene ever made, also available on Etsy and callingswalkingclub.com, and uh, what else? Oh, let's not forget the Marit keyring. What a prize! Currently, there are 381 cool dudes who are members on the YouTube channel. Random number generator. Generate me a number. Generate. 44. The person who's been a member for the 44th longest amount of time, 25 months, is Andy Churches. Nice one, Andy. Please get in touch and I will send that cool stuff to you. That's it. More great prizes coming soon. All right, cool dudes. Thanks for watching. Thank you for sending me your pictures of the key rings. And one more thing. Stay cool.